Hello and welcome to Rajya Sabha Television. You're watching The Big Picture with me, Frank Pereira. The Bombay High Court has upheld the constitutional validity of the Real Estate Regulation Act and made it applicable to all unfinished projects where completion certificate has not been issued. According to the law notified by the centre, any project that has not received a completion certificate by May 1, 2017 will be treated as an ongoing project and all such projects need to get registered with the regulator. The developers will have to submit fresh uh, timelines for uh, completion. The HC has also made it clear that the regulator will have the right to register or not to register a project if the fresh timeline to complete the unfinished project is unreasonable. The order said that the regulator can also issue necessary directions to the promoter in such cases taking into consideration the facts of each case. On this edition of The Big Picture, we will analyze the Bombay High Court's order confirming the constitutional validity of RERA. Joining me on the program today are Praveen Jain, Vice Chairman, National Real Estate Development Council, M.L. Lahoti, Senior Advocate of the Supreme Court, Venkat Rao, Corporate and Real Estate Expert, and uh, Shelly Singh, Coordinator, Federation of Apartment Owners Association, Ghaziabad. Thank you to all my guests for joining me on this edition of The Big Picture. Venkat Rao, I'd like to begin with you, of course. What are the implications of uh, this particular order by the Bombay High Court? Well, the implication is you have to go a little uh, back and see what has happened. See, since the time 2016, uh, the, you know, the act had come into force and one year on, uh, the, actually, uh, the effective portion of the act came into effect. Since the uh, you know, last one, one and a half years, there has been this crumble that this is an anti-promoter act and there's a lot of stringent provisions and uh, promoters have been tied around in a, uh, you know, uh, in a tighter hook, I would say. And um, therefore, there was this, uh, you know, clamor that, you know, this is a retrospective act, certain ongoing projects, especially uh, prospectively, if you talk uh, ongoing projects being uh, those projects where the completion certificate was not mm -hmm. uh, there and the development work was on. So uh, the, the clamor was that, you know, for the acts done in the past, we are being penalized now. So having said that, uh, from the day one, it was pretty clear. So the constitutional validity was challenged by various uh, across the country. Now with this, uh, with Supreme Court's order being there and then uh, Bombay High Court had to come out with uh, their order within two months, if you go back and see in September. So now this, this uh, you know, the order would act more like a, a guidance for the rest of the uh, high courts. Having said that, the order is a very detailed order. There has been submissions from across the board, including mm -hmm. from the Bias Association. It's about 330 page order and it's a very detailed analytic order. So now the challenges of, uh, you know, various uh, builders in respect of uh, constitutional validity, A, on the uh, retrospectiveness of the, uh, you know, implicate provisions, uh, restrictions on, uh, you know, uh, trade, all these have been upheld uh, to be valid. Uh, they have found that uh, the Honorable uh, Bombay High Court has, Bombay High Court has found that uh, the, uh, the, in fact, uh, if you ask me, the Judge Patel's uh, statement in the uh, judgment is very important, where he said that the act look, should be looked upon as a promoter-friendly act, not as an anti-promoter act. And then the provisions, excepting to the, uh, you know, uh, extent of uh, one single provision, where uh, they have struck it down in respect of the appointment of a uh, judicial member, hmm. um, uh, you know, uh, in, to the FLN tribunal. Everything has been held okay. to be... Let, let me get, get in Praveen Jain into the picture now. You know, Praveen Jain, as far as uh, this order is concerned, what changes now after the Bombay High Court's order? जैसे अभी वेंगट ने बताया कि लोग लोगों को था कि ये रेट्रोस्पेक्टिव नहीं होना चाहिए और जो लोग रजिस्ट्रेशन नहीं करवा पाए थे मुझे अगले दो तीन महीने के अंदर मुझे लगता है सब लोग रजिस्ट्रेशन करवाएंगे इसके अंदर और अगले डेढ़ से दो साल के अंदर डिलीवरी भी होनी चाहिए क्योंकि काफी स्ट्रेस में थे डेवलपर पहले भी सिर्फ कुछ स्टेट ऐसे थे जहां पर इस तरह के डेल्यूट किया गया था कि जो ऑन गोइंग प्रोजेक्ट है उसको बाहर कर दिया गया था most of the states के अंदर uh, uh, ongoing project इसके अंदर इसके अंदर ही देखे गए थे और जो लोग नहीं registration करवा पाए हैं जैसे मैंने बता, बताया अभी वो लोग uh, अगले दो तीन महीने के अंदर register करवाएंगे अपनी properties को मेरी हमारी काफी लोगों से बात हुई है हमारी जो काफी members हैं या non members हैं association की तरफ से और uh, अगले साल डेढ़ साल के अंदर सब लोग काम तो कर रहे थे delivery के ऊपर but uh, registration का issue था वो registration अगले दो तीन महीने में होने के बाद uh, अगले डेढ़ से दो सालों के अंदर 
बड़ा चेंज आएगा और लोगों को प्रॉपर्टी के हैंड ओवर भी हो जाएंगे ठीक है बने रहिए थैंक यू फॉर योर सबमिशन दे लेट मी गो क्रॉस टू एम एल लाहौटी नाउ सीनियर एडवोकेट ऑफ द सुप्रीम कोर्ट मिसर लाहौटी यू नो हाउ डज दिस डिसीजन हेल्प होम बायर्स बिन एट द रिसीविंग एंड ऑफ द बाग इन ऑल दिस वाइल this is certainly one of the finest judgment and cheers so far as the home buyers are concerned as you know the parliament passed this law and it was gazetted almost 20 months back but unfortunately its implementation or execution was not there now originally originally the matter had come before the supreme court and supreme court directed that the matter may be transferred to bombay high court and kudos to bombay high court divisional bench because supreme court had directed somewhere in september 2017 and within two two and a half months the bombay high court saw to it that the matter is not only heard and uh, lengthy extensive arguments of some of the eminent lawyers of bombay were considered and finally the judgment was delivered it is a remarkable thing so far as the bombay high court is concerned and everyone in our fraternity must be very very pleased and delighted to see such a fast disposal and as you are aware the judgment runs to 330 pages and so far as the builders are concerned or the promoters they had challenged almost every provision almost every section of rera and their case broadly was that uh, it is one sided because the parliament law is in favor of the home buyers this was the core submission or the core case of theirs a that it it ought not to be given a retrospective effect the penalty provision are very harsh so far as the registration is concerned ongoing project ought not to be covered and completion certificate ought not to be lakshman rekha or criteria for covering the the projects right and finally they said that uh, the penal provision a penal provision ought not to be allowed and, and and also 70% money ought not to be given by the builders and 30% by the home buyers the bombay high court had said uh, or called out three or four proposition and uh, as you know this case this rera was a enlightening uh, uh, enactment by the parliament sure. in the sense that uh, its statement and object and reason clearly shows that uh, the uh, frustration of the build of the buyers and cheating and a fraud committed to home buyers by the big builders necessarily has to be taken into consideration right and bombay high court decided number 1 we are not giving it a retrospective effect but we are merely saying that those project which had not received a completion certificate must fall within the four corners of the rera the penalty provision also uh, of rera was upheld by bombay high court and so far as the uh, completion certificate they had made it clear that all those projects which had not received completion certificate mm. whenever they had started uh, those project will be within the framework of the rera so sure, okay these three things and as i said repeatedly okay. they are referred to the aim and an object you know you you've made uh, some very valid points the, the about parliament you made some very valid points about name. consumers and how this particular order is going to help buyers as well uh, you know we have a representative of the owners uh, association here with us shelly singh are you happy with this order of the bombay high court how do you believe it's going to help home buyers and you know do you believe that this is the right judgment or right order that has been passed indeed uh, as a um, the it's a very good news for home buyers as uh, we have already seen after the central uh, law being passed in, on 1st may 2017 within 3 months uh, it has to be executed in states level but uh, we have observed if you see the facts out of 29 states only the 15 states have notified it so and uh, not even one single union territory so it's a big deal for all of us that how the things are being implemented we have yes we have law there are model by law being passed by the uh, central government but now it's the duty of state government to look into uh, all the uh, laws and the regulation 
And yes, uh, this uh, levy, the central government has already given it to state government that yes, you can uh, use these laws, you can modify these laws according to the suitability of your state. But somehow we have seen the things as um, Sir has also said, the occupancy certificate is not there with the uh, builders. But yes, their uh, project is going on and, and it's, it's in very full fledged it's going. So this is our concern and we have already uh, definitely will get a strength uh, with this uh, case as we have already filed up uh, uh, the case to Allahabad High Court. So definitely we'll be getting a very good uh, response and uh, we are looking for a good time. Okay, looking for a good time ahead is <laughs> what you're suggesting. Home looking for a good time. Okay, okay. great okay. news for home buyers is what you're suggesting, uh, yes. of course. But, you know, let me go across to Venkat Rao now. You know, the issue of these states that was raised by Shelly Singh is a very pertinent issue, yes. you know. At the end of the day, several states have diluted the provisions yes. of RERA. What's going to happen after this order has now been passed? Well, as, you, as she was rightly pointing out, she wants to have a good time and everybody wants to have a good time. Having said that, uh, the point is that most of the states had taken an advantage of, you know, the, the, the way the law was structured. The law was structured because state being, you know, the development law and land being a state subject, the central law was only a guidance in the sense that states could, uh, you know, modify and adopt the rules for implementation of the central act. But unfortunately, what had happened was various, uh, especially on the ongoing side, ongoing project side, there have been huge dilutions, I would say. And especially I, uh, in certain states, uh, the dilution had actually, uh, you know, uh, taken away the, uh, the, the main uh, object of the law itself. So, uh, as far as the uh, ongoing projects are mm. concerned, now with this clarity, with the Bombay High Court upholding the constitutional uh, validity, and then that they saying that the development and completion certificate or the kind of benchmarks for uh, uh, you know uh, registration and which would be qualifying uh, Lakshman Rekha as uh, Laudi Sabha was saying would be the ones for the uh, registration of the projects. So most of the projects where the pain still persists I think would now come into the registration ambit. So naturally because the Bombay High Court judgment would be more of a guidance and then it is coming from the Supreme Court because Supreme Court had given two months to the Bombay High Court to come out with the judgment. So they have done it, wonderfully done it I would say and very analytically and deeply done uh, uh, judgment. So this would more or less act as a guidance for uh, UP or uh, for uh, Haryana or any other state. So a pleasant change is what we have seen is what you are suggesting but, after seeing laws that have been lopsided in favour of in favor would, of builders, now we are seeing a law that is in favor of buyers. No, it was always a you know a buyer centric law, and that's how the government had initiated it. But what had happened? We should congratulate the central government and the 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 authority. They had been guiding, had been suggesting to the states that please do not step out of the ambit of the law. But somehow, the things in states or in the federal structure, you understand how the things function. Having said that. Uh, the state central government, wherever uh, in the union territories, uh, just correcting her, union territories was under the Union Urban Development Ministry. They had come out with the rules and uh, the rules there were pretty clear. The completion certificate was the Lakshman Rekha. But unfortunately in certain states, it was not so. It was sure. The, uh, sure. So sure. There I think now we sure. would have a tighter situation, I would say. Okay. Okay. Praveen Jain, uh, you know, as far as consumers are concerned, do you believe that this is the best thing that has happened to the consumers? ये बिल्कुल ठीक कह रहे हैं अब उनके बिल्कुल फेवर की बात है ये मगर मुझे सिर्फ इसमें एक भी एक बात और भी ऐड करनी है कई स्टेट ऐसी है जहां पर कंप्लीशन सर्टिफिकेट मिलता ही नहीं सालों साल और उसके अंदर उसका नाम बदल जाता है किसी का कोई उसका नाम ऑक्यूपेशन सर्टिफिकेट रख देता है या कहीं और रख दिया जाता है वो उसमें भी क्लैरिटी एक आनी बाकी है अभी शायद वो सुप्रीम कोर्ट में जब जाएगा तो एक क्लैरिटी आएगी इसके ऊपर भी कि कंप्लीशन सर्टिफिकेट को जो लक्ष्मण रेखा जैसे मान लिया गया अभी उसमें उसका नाम अगर कहीं बदल के ऑक्यूपेशन सर्टिफिकेट आता है या कुछ और आता है तो उसको भी उसको कंसिडर किया जाए but the ultimate end user is very good. Yeah, yeah. Just to add to Parveen Ji, I think uh, the, even Bombay High Court has as much said it that the act has to be interpreted in a constructive manner, in a harmonious construction um, has to be done of the act. And the purpose of the act has to be of the end users getting their units and it's not as if a promoter need to be penalized. If somewhere there is an occupation certificate and he has completed his obligations eventually of delivering the unit with all the promises, as you see, is what as you get. If that is done, I think to that extent, states would also consider that. 
and even the uh, apex courts even the authorities would consider that and that's how whether you call it an occupation certificate or a completion certificate that does not matter but what matters is what they get sure you know um, um, yeah please one thing uh, i have just uh, seen the rera website few days mm. back the uh, information that is being still provided uh, by the builders uh, and the version being provided to the customers there is a really lot of discrepancies in between them, them. in spite of so many times it has been uh, directed by the this rera act the builders are still not focusing on disclosing the um, points their points what they have to so this is again a point of concern that really it will be how it will be affected its implementation level how what percentage of implementation level will be there yeah so this is a big concern yeah law, law is one aspect of it but implementation right. is another it's, aspect it's, we'll it's, have to yes. see what exactly happens hmm. on the ground there we'll get to that in just a bit but before that of course mr lahoti as far you you raised the issue of parliament and how the central government should be credited for what's been done with rera you know where, where, where credit is due, it must be given, you know, after the RERA uh, uh, Act was in fact uh, stuck in Parliament for a long time, finally it has been passed and finally we've seen it fructify into what we are seeing today and credit must go to parliamentarians and the central government, isn't it? Well, uh, I'm not too sure whether such credit uh, the central government or the state government deserves. If they at all deserves, when the parliament enacted it and it was gazetted, why it took more than 20 months so far as the implementation is concerned. In Haryana or in UP, where according to me more than 2 lakhs flats are involved of the big builders, but for Supreme Court intervention, nothing probably had happened. And as all of us are aware, the Chief Justice of India, Justice Deepak Misra, is after it. He knows the, the plight, the frustration, the fraud which was committed on these uh, home buyers. As you are aware, the, all the three projects, the big project, Unitech, JP, or Amrapali, they are all before the Supreme Court, and Supreme Court is taking an extremely serious and concerned view. That is why, uh, so far as JP is concerned, Manoj Gaur was called other day with all sets of directors and executive in the Supreme Court, Unitec also, Supreme Court apart from asking 750 crore deposit, is taking a very serious view. So according to me, the, the speed or the pace in which Supreme Court is taking the matter, I wish the central government or the state of uh, UP or Haryana would have taken. And why diluting? It is an act which is passed by the parliament, unanimous uh, enactment by the parliament and is still Haryana and UP had, had the courage or dared to do the uh, what is called diluting it. This is highly unfortunate. And finally, as you are aware, even today the central government had said that they are going to obtain independent directors in Unitec and uh, their properties etc. are to be under surveillance. But if Supreme Court is taking all these actions, and finally, it will settle in the Supreme Court because Bombay High Court judgment, which, will, which is passed against the builder, obviously, they are going to come in appeal in the Supreme Court. And Supreme Court having been closed, uh, closing for winter vacation on 15th of December, I think there would be a lot of activities before 15 December. And once Supreme Court confirms the Bombay High Court order, it will be a law applicable for the entire country. And all these politicians, wherever they are sitting and diluting at the instance of the builder, certainly would not have any interference any further, which is the welcome step. And uh, most of the builders uh, would probably uh, are, are in uncertainty, but, but the home buyers certainly is a very delighted time because of the courageous judgment and very timely judgment with the divisional bench of the Bombay High Court had passed. Sure. You know, going forward, uh, Venkat Rao, do you believe that implementation is going to be a problem or that's a sealed matter now? Well, uh, that would still continue to be, if you ask me, because uh, eventually this would be a law, uh, as uh, law is upside if it goes to Supreme Court and then gets up. But then eventually, you see, you need to have that kind of uh, commitment from the states also. Uh, the website, as she was just pointing it out, for example, in certain websites, you don't have the information that is mandatory required to be there for a buyer to, uh, you know, understand the project and then invest. And uh, the ultimate action is to be taken by the state authority, which is running the entire show. Now, there, 
the implementation is something which is still uh, you know a big question mark i would say but states are uh, like maharashtra maharashtra is very active and i would say that because of the transparency uh, that it would bring in eventually in a, over a period of time even the authorities would be compelled to be more much more active and much more uh, you know transparent in their dealings and thereby implementation would improve overall real estate would uh, be a big winner um, i mean i would say the state that we are in today is primarily because of the credibility issues mm. i think this transparency would improve the credibility and thereby quality players would be there so even the promoter would be a winner a buyer would surely be a winner in this so overall industry economy would improve but yes it would take little more time in all this to happen some fine tuning is uh, required is uh, is what uh, venkat rao is suggesting uh, shelly singh a fine tuning is required but as i said there is a different version of stories being uh, provided by the promoters on the rera website so now it's a whole sole responsibility of the rera officials also to take it very seriously you know what is happening uh, a few days back i heard uh, <laughs> a statement from one rera authority that uh, on the website if uh, it has to be updated the information has to be updated we need some time but as a, a technology oriented uh, professional i understand how much time is basically required if you are really wanted to do something so it is not not about that ki you cannot provide the data if data can be provided by one builder because you are assigning a user id and login to every uh, builders every uh, builder or the promoter a promoter which comes under that act those personals are given and user id the credentials so it's not that they cannot within a day or two they can provide the information but the point is that they don't want to set this transparency and they just want to go out of the mainstream which is being provided by the central government mm. so this central government law is really for home buyers for end users but yes there is a dilution when it comes to the ground okay there is a dilute i think that that's an aspect that we have touched upon quite a bit on this particular program but there are uh, pravin jain there could be sticking issues uh, going forward as well how do we address some of them and what corrective measures need to be taken dekhiye mujhe lagta hai ki ab aane wala time jo hai usme ready to movement property ka time hai aur ab jo purane projects hain wo to khair deliver honge agle saal ke 1.5 saal ke andar jo bhi delay project hai बट आजकल जो नए डेवलपर्स हैं जो सॉरी जो ऑर्गेनाइज प्लेयर हैं जो आप काम करना चाहते हैं तो वो मॉडल चेंज कर रहे हैं अपना कि वो प्रॉपर्टी को पूरा तैयार करें डिलीवर करें बिल्कुल कम्पलीशन के बाद तो मुझे लगता है आने वाला टाइम मॉडल चेंज हो जाएगा और बायर्स के लिए भी बेटर रहेगा कॉन्फिडेंस भी बूस्ट होगा उनके बायर का ओके आई गॉट अबाउट टू मिनट्स लेफ्ट ऑन द प्रोग्राम सो एम गोट गेट जो प्रॉपर्टी आप खरीद रहे हैं वो जी जी बोलिए जी प्रवीण जी जी मैं कह रहा था कि जो भी प्रॉपर्टी बायर खरीद हाँ जो बायर जो भी प्रॉपर्टी खरीदेगा सब कुछ देखभाल के कि आज कितना सुपर एरिया है कितना कारपेट एरिया है क्या स्पेसिफिकेशंस हैं क्या फीचर्स हैं प्रॉपर्टी वो सब देख के खरीदेगा आने वाला टाइम उसी का होगा ओके मिस्टर लाहौटी आई गॉट वन मिनट लेफ्ट ऑन द प्रोग्राम नाउ क्लोज द शो फॉर अस विद द वे फॉरवर्ड रियली यस it's very simple uh the the builder must have to change their philosophy rotating the money taking entire lot of money 80 90% from the home buyers and investing it in their other project now on this this they have to forego it is as simple as this and they have to change the their mentality their approach and realize the significance of what bombay high court in 330 page had said and as i said this is the final judgment and there cannot be any question of any dilution further because every aspect of the rera have been very extensively dealt and uh, uh, considered by the bombay high court so one signal which is going out of this judgment is you uh, correct your your system this is what the uh, project proponent or the builder has been signaled by the bombay high court and i'm sure now on at least they will rectify the process okay. in which they were working earlier before the bombay high court judgment okay on that note then we'll have to call it a wrap on this edition of the big picture good times ahead for consumers good time ahead for home buyers let's hope that uh, you know there's a smile on everyone's face today thank you to all my guests for joining me on the program and putting things into perspective for us that's it from me see you again next time <laughs>